challenging projects every programmer should try. This should be a good one for you guys because every single day I get asked, what should I do? So let's find out. Challenging projects every programmer should try. This post has spurred a lot of discussion on Hacker News and Reddit. Does that just mean people called you an idiot? I'm pretty sure that's 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 Reddit. You just you just got dunked on the entire time. Okay, there's oh more challenging projects programmers should try. Actually, you didn't include. Okay, shut up. That's, dude, that's it. Okay, I wanna talk, uh, let's see. I talk to a lot of students and professional developers that often want to start a side project, but they aren't sure what to build. Goodness gracious, is that not every last person in this chat? Like, constantly, all the time. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Dude, okay, I'm gonna first give a piece of advice before I read, okay? It's called skill issues right now. I'm, I'm coming in heavy on the skill issues, but the easiest thing to do is you first think about what you're interested in. If you don't even know what you're interested in, then it doesn't matter. Draw like 10 items on a piece of paper and throw a dart at it. Like, shut the hell up and just pick something, okay? There's no single project I'm going to be able to help you with if you don't even know what you're interested in. If you know what you're interested in, then you don't have to ask me, okay? Below is a handful of software projects that taught me a lot. In fact, they're great because you can build them multiple times and learn new things each time. Ooh, I do I do love the Kata approach. So whenever I don't know what to build or I want to learn a new programming language or framework, I start with one of these, a text editor. Interesting. I wonder if it's a text editor in the terminal or if it's a text editor like GUI. A 2D game, space invaders okay okay this is good I, i've built space invaders c sharp by the way x and a by the way c sharp by the way c sharp by the way c sharp I, I did it in c sharp by the way i'm just waiting for all the c sharp andies to be like i learned visual basic by writing a text editor nice c hashtag c octothorpe c sharp is the goat trust me it's the best Text editor. We use text. Okay, hold on. Let me see more of this. Compiler. Okay, this is good. This is good. Mini operating system. I've never done that, but that would be great. Spreadsheet. Hard. I can imagine spreadsheets being super hard. Video game console emulator. Hard. That also just sounds... This, I mean, this last one sounds more like an exercise in reading docs. Just throwing that out there. That one sounds probably the most tedious of them all because you just have to be able to take instructions and play them. We use text editors every day, but do you know how it really works? Ignoring all the fancy features that your favorite editor has, how would you implement a text box that supports a movable text cursor and selecting, inserting, and deleting text? No, you can't use built-in text box component from your favorite GUI framework. This is actually great. This actually, I think, is probably the best suggestion yet because you're going to actually run into a lot of data structures. You're going to run into searching problems. You're going to run into all sorts of design issues, right? How you design the cursor your first time through is going to suck. And just going through it multiple times. This is actually great, by the way. This is a gr this is just fantastic. Mm. Because the big thing I want people, like there's actually a course I want to build. I'm, I'm talking with boot.dev about this exact course, but it's called Building Good Software Fast. And I'm going to try to distill my 20 years effectively of programming experience into how do you shoot for from the hip and build pretty dang good software. Managing state will be a nightmare. Exactly. I mean, that's the hardest part about the whole thing is just like, you have to manage state. You have to have the changes that aren't written to file. How often do you write to file? Do you do multiple cursors? So hard. Imagine pressing a backspace on multiple cursors. Just a lot of stuff you gotta do. The biggest challenge is figuring out how to store a text document in memory. <laughs> My first thought was to use an array, but that has horrible performance if the user inserts text anywhere other than the end of the document. Luckily, there are some nice data structures to learn to solve this. I wonder what uh, data structures you'd even use. I actually have no idea what to even use. Another, But I know that DSA would be immediately applicable, right? You have to have some sort of like region-based stuff. I would assume it's like positional rope. Well, I mean, my first thought was a rope, but is the whole thing just one big rope? Oh, that rope. Yeah, ro it's called a, a, a rope strings, right? Look at that. See? ropes. This is a rope data structure. Another hurdle is was learning how a text cursor behaves in popular editors. For example, if I press the up arrow key with the cursor in the middle of the text document, where will the cursor move? Same column, not if the line is shorter. Keep pressing up and the cursor will snap back to the original column once the line is long enough. This is actually true. It's such a good point. Let's go like right here. If I go down, 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 look at that. Notice that it stays in place. Like, that's crazy, right? Like, until you move over one, it actually keeps, like, that information. Like, that's, the state is crazy. Also, did I just see a lithium give me a sweet, sweet hot dog? Did you boys just see lithium's hot dog come flying out right there? Thank you, lithium, for that 20 banger. You just made it into a YouTube video, lithium. Just want to let you know, you made it into you right there, you and your hot dog, right into it. After implementing the basic editor, I challenge you to implement two more features, undo, redo. Oh my goodness. So people don't know this. This is so good right here. This is so good. Undo is a tree. It's not. 
it is not linear. I know that's kind of crazy to think about, but think about this. Here's my changes. What happened? Yes, I did work. Uh, dude, I snuck away and I did a little bit of multi-threaded programming just because I, I, I have to do a little bit of programming every day, okay? Shut up. Anyways, so I click here. This is sometime in the past, right? And let's just say I put in that. Look at what I just created. I created two different branches. This branch, which is now my head, but this was my previous branch. What happened if I go here and do more and then do more? And now we have this. What happened if I go back and I jump to this one? And I go here. I mean, it's a crazy tree. Undo redo is crazy. It's why you can't just control Z all the time. If you don't have an undo tree, like if you don't have an undo tree, you'll just lose work. It just goes away because you can't do it. Why can't it be linear? I li I just lit I I just literally showed you why it can't be linear. I just like I what? I'm in, emo I'm in emotional pain right now. I'm in emotional pain. My day job involves a lot of tracking and reconciling changes and contractual agreements across time, and people have no idea how complex this can get. Yes, I can imagine it's very complex. This kind of stuff is super hard. Things to learn. Data structures for storing text. Oh, oh look at that. You're right. It was a rope. Oopsies. A gap buffer. I don't know a gap buffer. I only know thigh gap. Peace table. I don't know those. I don't know these last two. Behavior and implementation of a text cursor. Design patterns for undo, redo, memento, and command. Interesting abstractions to separate the visual and memory aspects of a text. Interesting text. Uh, editor, data structures, design implementation. Nice. Very cool. 2D game. Uh, this one's great just because collision detection is fantastic. Like being able to separate out. You can learn ECS. Oh man, I've always wanted to get further in ECS. I did a small ECS implementation in JavaScript a while back. And it was a ton of fun. Even the most simple games required uh, some unique data structures and design patterns. The idea here is to implement a well-defined game from start to finish without getting bogged down on other fun stuff, game design and art. Also, it is best uh, to use bare bones 2D graphics library. Yes, not a big game engine that'll hide all the interesting bits from you. This is fair. First, you'll have to learn how to draw the screen. I had no idea how this works. You're actually clearing the screen, then drawing each portion of the screen in rapid succession, many times a second. Yes, you have to have a double buffer for this or else you get the blinkies. Blinkies have a transparent pixel value, dude. Old man judo, that's shockingly good idea. There's like there's some fun ideas out there. Second, you'll learn all about the game loop. A game is effectively looping between drawing, getting user input, and processing the game logic. Third, you'll learn how to process user input. I never paid attention to the subtleties of initially pressing, holding, and releasing keys or mouse buttons, let alone handling things like double click. How often do you check for user input? Fun fact, in my second real job, I had to implement all of the motions of an iPad, but on the web. And double click was one of them. There's like a whole, there's a whole art to creating a mousing library and doing all that. It was a lot of fun, like zooming in, breaking down, the exact like because you do mate like if you just treat everything like a matrix you can do all the matrix multiplications but breaking that all down into exactly just the formula so you're not just doing matrix multiplication because it was like an ipad 2 back in the day it was a lot of fun if you are constantly checking then that means the rest of the game is frozen that's true fourth you'll learn how to create and manage all of your game objects and their state for example how do you generate dynamic number of enemies the factory pattern helps a lot Ooh, java the man's java fifth you'll learn how to apply game logic when does the bullet position get updated how does the bullet know where it is because it knows where it isn't when do more enemies come on screen how do you know when an enemy is destroyed when is the game over i've never used modulo operation prior to making games but it's littered all over my game's code <laughs> let's go once you get the basic game working the title screen menu the game over uh, screen making sure the game runs at the same speed even on different computers and explore how to implement more interesting enemies with ai still not enough shader effects sounds online multiplayer oh, see games are just foreverly hard they're literally for foreverly there's everything. That's fantastic. All right, compiler. Let's talk about a compiler. I'm just going to skip over this because you guys can figure out that stuff. The most eye-opening uh, projects I've worked on are compilers. I did a compiler once in college. I still, to this day, recommend it as one of the greatest projects ever. Even now, if I have a free Sunday afternoon to do some coding, chances are it is a compiler. It is a great feeling when you create something that enables others to create more things. By implementing one, I had to learn so much about the intricacies of a compilers that I normally would never think about. When do expressions get implicitly typed converted? I suggest writing a compiler from scratch uh, for a very a small basic-like language, yes, and compile to any other language that you know well. For example, you could write a tiny basic compiler in Python that outputs C-sharp code. C-sharp mentioned, C-sharp mentioned, everybody! Quickly, quickly! Com Haskell is so great for compilers, is it? What makes it great? Beast code mode, beast code mode, C-sharp, quickly!
It does not have to output assembly or C. Yes, avoiding uh, it will let you focus on the compiler itself. That's true. Your semantic analyzer doesn't have to technically output anything. A transpiler is just, a, I mean, transpilers are compilers. The first hurdle is figuring out how, we did, we transpiled mini Pascal to IL, uh, Microsoft Intermediate Language. And that was really fun because then we used a compiler to transfer intermediate language into compiled ones. Uh, internal sealed abstract. <laughs> Why would you do that? Have you heard of TypeScript? TypeScript literally is a compiler. <laughs> it's a transpiler from fake JavaScript to real JavaScript. Yo, dog, we write JavaScript so you can take your JavaScript and make it JavaScript. Just what it is. It's just life. It's just life. You know, this project has a ton of existing resources to help you and simple compiler can be completed in a few days. Don't let the jargon scare you. The plus the possibilities are endless. If, honestly, if you're going to do a compiler, do this one right here, a book, if I'm not mistaken, you can use code PrimeGen. It should still give you 30% off. I get $0 from this. I worked with Thorsten Ball and said, I don't want anything off. You just give the thing you would normally give me, give to, to the peoples. Compiler is the most quintessential project of my learning. So I want you guys to learn it as cheap as possible. Buy his book. It's right here, theinterpreterbook.com. It's fantastic. It's one of the best, one of the best books. And he also has uh, writing a compiler and go as well. So just do it. It's very, very good. It's very very good. Absolutely love it. So I think all these things are fantastic. I really like the idea of doing a, a compiler. First hurdle is uh, figuring out how to, how to lex or tokenize. That's a super fun part of the project, honestly. It, it, tokenizing is one of the most useful things ever. Honestly, tokenizing, like just your thought process on it. Well, you know how I showed you like the little thing that I, or I was telling you about the thing I'm doing for Netflix right now, categorizing logs. I'm just building a big ass tokenizer. And then I'm building like a basic parser. And that is it. Tokenizing is simple, yeah, but it's super useful for people that have never tokenized and parse. It is so dang good to think about these things. Then uh, we'll parse the code. That is, uh, check the structure of the input and produce tree representations of the code. The recursive descent parsing technique is beautiful. Next, you will semantically check the input, ensure that the code makes sense and the type rules are being followed. Finally, you can generate output, yeah. And so my next thing is I'm literally going to create a recursive descent parsing for uh, how to analyze errors. Learn to stir to, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Where's the N in there? Judo, you know you gotta put an N in there. You know there's a stir N talk, okay? There's always an N. <laughs> there's always an N somewhere in there because everything else with stir is crazy. Take it. Dude, I got shit on so hard by my coworkers because I include uh, a stir check without an N. And they're just like, you will never introduce that into the code base ever again for any reason. And I was just like, okay, okay, my bad, my bad. Hey, my bad, my bad, my fault. Okay, I'm not, I'm not like, a, I'm not a master in the C++ arenas. Okay, even though I know that's a C, that's a C, a C-ism. Uh, anyways, this project uh, has a ton of resources to help you and a simple compiler can be completed in a few days. Oh yes, okay, we already read this. Yes, great, 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 right? All great, do it. Uh, does he have this, my tutorial? Okay, he didn't have the one that I like. Write an interpreter and go. I would normally follow this link, but it's it's an Amazon link and I don't want to get owned. Mini operating system. This one I'm actually interested in. Over the years, I found myself applying fundamental concepts from operating systems to a variety of domains like games and even predictive models of human behavior. In the classroom settings, the algorithms and data structures used by operating system might seem abstract or useless, but they're really useful. Implementing an operating system also helped me understand far more about what's going on underneath the hood. I would actually, this is something I've never done. It's always been on my to-do list. But the problem is to-do list. I also have a lot of stupid stuff on a to-do list, right? You know what I mean? I got a lot of stuff. There's a bit of learning curve and some barriers to get started. It, it depended on hardware. However, uh, let's see, following a book or tutorial when you when you should be able to get a bootable OS working that can run your own programs. I highly recommend my colleague's free online book, Making a Risk Five Operating System Using Rust. Oh my goodness, Rust mentioned! We got Rust mentioned. We got Rust mentioned. We got a Rust mentioned, people. We got it. We got it. We got it. I, actually, this is something I might consider doing. I want to shoot for 2025 to do my own. It'd be a lot of fun. I got a lot. I have too many fun things to build right now that I can't. I can't. I, Vim APM is just completely my mind space right now. It's still not difficult enough for you. Try these two projects. Spreadsheet. This seems like a fantastic idea. Just being able to apply calculated cell values over spaces just sounds like such a hard 
hard thing because not only not only do you have to do the spreadsheeting, you also literally get to build a mini compiler. You get to build a compiler. Oh, see, it just seems so fantastic. It, it combines the challenges uh, from a text editor with those of a compiler. Yes, yes. You'll have to learn how to represent the cell contents in memory and implement an interpreter for the programming language used for equations. Furthermore, directed to cyclic graphs. Let's go. Dags mentioned. Dag mentioned. Reactive programming paradigms. I think that's solid JS. I'm not really sure what they're trying to say. Uh, spreadsheet implementation technology. Amazon. Must be some sort of book. Dag mentioned. Excel mentioned. Let's go. Video game console emulator. This is the one I just don't I, I don't want to do. Writing an emulator or virtual machine for a video game console combines the challenges of writing a compiler, an operating system, and a compiler all into one. Damn. Off by one. Man. Off by one. That sucks. It is quite rewarding to play a real game made by someone else with your emulator. Emulating a real video game console means writing a virtual machine that pretends to function just like the actual CPU and other hardware components. This allows you to run games designed for a video game console with your emulator. I recommend starting uh, by emulating Chip 8, which is a simple, fictitious console, before moving on to real video game consoles. The NES, SNES, Game Boy, and Game Boy. Oh, Advance. <laughs> My brain just shit the bed. I couldn't even read past it because I heard Game Boy and Game Boy. And it was just like, <laughs> that was funny. Are all quite feasible to emulate with a fair amount of documentation and open source emulators already, uh, already. Dude, so good. I'm lagging. Though they each have their own quirks to make things interesting. Certain games may rely on undocumented bugs slash features of a specific hardware. There are also Pico 8, which has become a very profitable fantasy console. Oh, fun. Great stuff in here, by the way. Great, great stuff in here. I liked all of this. You guys should definitely consider this. It, my recommendations are compiler, super useful, but a little bit more academic. Uh, a text editor honestly sounds great. Text editor sounds probably like the most boots on the ground way to get good. And I know a lot of people when they start off programming, they want to be game programmers. So if you want to be a game programmer, pick one of these two, because they're going to probably both have similar aspects, right? A text editor, very well could have a lot of stuff with graphics that you're going to have to consider and all that, painting to the screen. Uh, but it's going to have some pretty fun data structures that I think are more applicable to the real world. The 2D game one, this one's just a little bit different. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Pretty exciting. I built, I, I built Space Invaders. Super fun. The name is the Primogen.